This vehicle is actually the first vehicle that we built. We got our first money uh, March of 2019. We also had the pandemic in 2019. Right. Usually you get to have an idea, you get some funding, you get a building, you fill the building with people. But with this, we had to basically work on the vehicle remotely for a year. Put the design together and then luckily my battery company is just down the street. We were uh -huh. still some space from them. And Steve and I and a couple uh, couple helpers put this vehicle together over about three months. It's a bit rough and tumble. Sure. All the wiring was done in place. Yeah. But this this was the launch edition vehicle. This yeah. was the first 4,000 pre-orders. Funniest thing to me is that we put the solar on the vehicle. Solar on the hood and the roof look like the solar on the dash, which in this video, I bet you can't even see the solar on the dash. That's yeah, very subtle. <laughs> we had that problem on here too, and we're like, well, we're launching the world's most efficient solar electric vehicle, and you can't see the damn solar. <laughs> so these solar cells were actually epoxied on top of the embedded oh, solar, okay. and then yeah. we clear coated over them just so you could see the solar in pictures. Kind of funny that we had embedded solar that worked like the very first vehicle, the very first attempt. It was hitting two of them. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. so we could see. Uh, I like see you got these like custom little headlight beams on there. They all got their. Little... Yeah, they uh, they kind of worked horribly, but they looked good. <laughs> um, well, this does a good job looking good. We had yeah. to change to the center projector because of the motorcycle regulations. So, oh, so right. the, the FMVSS regulations say for a motorcycle you can't do that. You can't be more than 18 inches off center line with your mm. headlight. Interesting. So basically we have to keep everything within this area right here. Could you do both? You could, but then those are actually auxiliary lights. Because they take a, a projected lumens from your headlight, you have to project so many lumens, mm. it would be overkill to add double the lumens out there. It's also an efficiency thing. So you're gonna spend 60 watts in your headlight. You don't really wanna spend another 60 watts you know, outside. Gotcha. Your... This was all kind of race car suspension. Oh, wow. So it was, uh, it yeah, was yeah. tube steel, welded, <laughs> aero profile, uh, suspension right. members on the bottom, but it's really stiff. So it didn't have any of the damping that you felt on uh, Gamma that you drove. Uh -huh. And the production vehicle will be even better because we'll tune the suspension and damping you know, along the way. This worked. It's fun to drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is more like a race car. It's got a really stiff suspension. Cool, cool. Right here is the vehicle assembly line. So I'll oh, show you, show so you a simulation. Be... Okay. So the assembly line goes basically in a U or an L uh -huh. from, from where uh, one of the alphas are back here uh -huh. over to that corner. Wow. And then as we walk in, uh -huh. you'll see a green line in the middle here, and the green line is where we build our batteries and our solar. So the backstory of this is uh -huh. this was created in association with Moreau and Associates. Every piece of machinery in here was um, designed out in CAD with Monroe and Associates, and they did wow. tech time analysis, movement analysis of the operator, what kind of tools are gonna use, how uh -huh. the inventory flows out for the oh, whole wow. facility. And this is a representation of our manufacturing execution system. Okay, so what um, people are doing? So we're a data-driven company. I would have loved my other startups to be very data-driven, <laughs> sure, uh, but sure. it costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time. We have design tools from Dassault. Uh, we have product life management tools from Inovia. Oh, wow. The product life management takes your design and every iteration and makes sure that you know everything matches and you don't forget stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically executive change order management, but a very sophisticated way. Product life management rolls into your inventory accounting system, which is net suite for us. So we have an ERP system that's functional, which is actually pretty big for a startup. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we have a manufacturing execution system, which overlays the manufacturing environment. So the manufacturing execution system pulls from your ERP system, wow. your net suite system, pulls inventory out and puts it on the floor. Gotcha. When you need a battery pack, yeah. which is the keystone for the Eptera, it's the yeah. heaviest part of the Eptera, that's barcoded, that came out of inventory from your ERP system and now existing your manufacturing execution system. Cool. Now that barcode for the battery pack matches the VIN number for your vehicle. Oh, I see. So in gotcha. 10 years, you know what battery pack went into that vehicle. And then there's traceability all the way back to the cell and that battery pack is the deeper level of manufacturing execution. Is this the piece that would come from CPC? Yeah, so CPC would ship us the body. Okay. We put on the rear suspension to start. We would build the battery pack here. Oh, good, good. And then okay. we would get the body structure um, and frame and chassis from CPC in Italy. I I see. And then we put it through these 12 stations, uh -huh. 12 minutes per station, and about two hours you have your full Eptera built. 12 minute tack time gives you about 40 vehicles per eight hour shift. So okay. Eight hours, we okay. can build 40 vehicles. Uh -huh. We start a second shift, now we can build 80 vehicles. That's about 20,000 vehicles a year. Right. You don't want to grow too slow, right? That's no, well, we have 46,000 <laughs> orders now, so, you know, 
we got to fill them. But if we can ramp this place up to 20,000 vehicles a year, then we can hopefully cookie cutter this factory into other places. 100,000 square foot building in San Francisco and Texas and Virginia and the mm. Netherlands and Australia and Germany wow. and, and other parts of the world. We think that, you know, make this kind of the master plan yeah. and then uh, then build it elsewhere. That keeps deliveries close to the customer. Right. Keeps service parts close to the customer. We do a lot of things. You get to take advantage of local and state incentives. You're bringing jobs. Good, you know, good. That kind of stuff too. If you're building more in Europe, would that drastically decrease the cost of like shipping the whole CPC body from Italy or is that pretty affordable to move it over? Uh, you know, eventually we want to onshore the, the composite yeah, and um, metal production here. Uh -huh. uh, so we hope that there's kind of this uh, European manufacturing center mm -hmm. that, you know, hopefully maybe one facility like CPC services, you know, five, you know, assembly facilities around right, Europe. Right. And then we have uh, onshore production for composite and aluminum parts here that services the four factories we have in the U.S. So, cool. cool. Uh, so that's the ambition is to, you know, kind of divide and conquer, build in Italy to start uh -huh. and then bring some of that part production here mm -hmm. uh, so we can build it here. This is what the solar actually looks like. It's production. kind of an internal look. Oh, uh, okay. But this is basically what it looks like. We take these kind of solar cells, IBC solar cells, we string them together in a mm -hmm. robot down there, and then we embed them into a glass structure like this. Cool thing about these uh, solar cells is that they're pretty flexible. Oh yeah, so they can... So it's, it's, a, it's a mono crystal, but it is flexible because it's held together with this copper matrix in the back. You can break it. Oh and it's still producing power in the back. So oh, really? you had an angry girlfriend, you <laughs> took a bat to your Aptera, and she broke a couple cells, and you wouldn't have to worry about replacing the panel right away. It still produces <laughs> yeah. power. The nice. old solar cells, they were monocrystal where the electrical connections were just on the outside. Okay. So as soon as you broke the, the crystal, mm -hmm. no more power. I see. So with micro cracking or you know hail damage or stuff like that, as uh -huh. soon as you broke the cell, the whole panel's dead. Oh, it turns nice. into a resistor, you can't do anything else with it. So this is a much more kind of fault tolerant technology and it gives us the flexibility to embed them in a compound curved surface. Right. Did you experiment with the size of these or are they kind of from a supplier at that uh, size? They're, they're from a supplier called Maxion. Maxion. They've had this 125 millimeter square design uh -huh. forever. They take the corners off because in the production process, you know, they break a lot. Oh, I <laughs> So see. if you kept the corners on, you'd have a lot bigger uh, scrap rate. It does look pretty cool though. No, I agree. That makes a great pattern. Ways. I'm glad you went with them Diagonal? Yeah, diagonal. Yeah, that was top. something from the beginning where we, we, we did a bunch of testing on the cells and we said, how much can you bend them before they break? What we found is that you can't bend them as much this way as you can on a 45 degree axis. Oh. So if you, if you have to take the tips and curve them down, yeah. it's better to curve them down on I axis see. than straight. So if you did it straight, you would get like, uh, it's like 0.2 degrees less curvature out of them wow. than you can get if you put them on an axis like that. So where are they stressed the most? Um, the rear hatch as it comes over the side is actually where they're stressed. Oh, the I see, yeah, right here. This is where it curves the most as it comes over the side. I see. So uh, this is where two, remember we cut off four solar cells, two from each side here so they're actually cut off this piece is like this and there's a separate glass piece that fills right there. i think i saw that and it actually made it more in. more efficient because you have sun going in from the top of these strings mm -hmm. and then this one throws off the whole panel because it's not facing the same way as the rest gotcha this extra bit right here was really hard for the glass guys to make feeded the maximum width I of see. their machine. So if we, if we were able to take that off, then we're able to fit in their standard machine, but right. I have to pay another million and a half dollars to make a new machine. Wow. Uh, which everything is expensive in production, so. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the cells. These are NMC 811 chemistry. They're 2170 in format, so they're 21 millimeters in diameter and 70 millimeters tall. And this is what you have in your Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Tesla's now gone to a bigger, 4680, right. which is 46 millimeters in diameter, 80 millimeters tall. Uh, we do something different. As we increase our pack size, we use a 70 millimeter diameter cell, but we use a taller cell. So we go to 90 millimeters and 120 millimeters. Jeez. And that gives us much some... more energy density in one cell. And so you can reuse these kind of pieces yeah. because it's the same. Yeah, so Tesla went fatter, we went taller. <laughs> this is a battery module. So you take each of these cells and you plunk them into these cell brackets. Okay. And then you electrically <laughs> connect them. You get a, a laser bonder and it goes choop, 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 choop. And wow bonds them all together. And then this computer is actually what exists with each battery module on the side of the battery module, actually. And this is what keeps the batteries happy and healthy uh, right. over time. How does uh, scaling up, because you're going right from like a 45 kilowatt hour on the launch edition up to 60, 66 and then 106. 106, and they're getting, not getting 
twice as tall, but they can. They're fit not getting more. twice as tall, but it's really there's uh, there's some dead space in here. So you have the, the oh. cap that exists, and yeah. there's some safety mechanisms. If you just make the jelly roll taller, yeah, you get proportionally more energy density because oh. all the active material is more interesting. You know, also cylindrical cells. You have dead space in between the cells. Right. You don't pack the cells too close, and then you have uh -huh. little gaps in the middle, little triangular gaps in the middle. Do they become uh, harder to cool as they get taller, or do they cool? Oh, uh, they do. Yeah. So you have to transmit the heat all the way down, but you uh -huh. know the, the batteries are made of aluminum and copper and it conducts heat really well. So we take all of the heat out of the bottom of the batteries. So the batteries are bonded to a base plate and that base plate is what's cooled. Gotcha. We don't stress our cells, you know, like Tesla does because they have to take so much energy out of the cell. A Rivian pickup truck putting, you know, six C on that cell. So right, right. this little two and a half amp hour cell, you're taking 15 amps out of it. The internal resistance of the cell is what creates heat. It's hard to, to pull energy out right. and you waste some energy in that process. Mm. That's called internal impedance. That's what makes the cell hot. The more heat that's generated, the harder time it is to get out. So that's why Tesla has the serpentines that go through. But after is pulling such little power relatively. Yeah, we're pulling such little power that the internal impedance of the cell is much lower now. Cells keep getting better and better. Good. So the internal Good. impedance okay. of the cell is low. Uh -huh. uh, that means that you don't create a lot of heat through taking the power out or putting the power back in. And it means we don't have to take a lot of heat out. Wow. So you can get a lot okay. from the bottom. So it's really a surface area equation. Yeah. The more surface area you can touch, the more heat you can you can get out. And for the standard range, it'll still be these cells just with less modules? Yeah, the standard range, this is our packs, you know, kind of drawn out. Oh, okay. Uh, but the pack is made of six modules. Okay. The 45 kilowatt hour pack is our standard pack. Yeah. Um, and the 23 kilowatt hour pack, we just take cells out of parallel groups. Oh, so okay. there's 13 parallel groups. Uh -huh. We just take, you know, basically half the cells out. And that gives you a 23 kilowatt hour. Okay. And you go bigger, that's just a taller cell. And this is a much taller cell. Do you call those 2190s? 21? Yep. Okay, that's the official term. 2190s. No one's 21, really using those yet, huh? Those are, are you guys mm, the first? There are some people that are using them in Asia, but, but no, nothing in the electric vehicle space. Okay. So like uh, vape pens and uh, oh. some of the uh, like uh, cordless uh, electronics, you know, uh, power tools and toothbrushes and stuff. So they're using the, the taller cells. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know they were in use. That's awesome. That's that's the hood. That's the hood. <laughs> that's very light. It's glass, but it's actually, as you see, a little flexible. You can yeah, yeah. Can you can see the. Oh yeah. Wow. But super lightweight. That's incredible. We're still uh, working on some process control stuff, and you wouldn't think that's a giant paint of glass, you know, if you're installing a window or something this big, it would not feel that light. The weird thing is, uh, see how flexible it is. Yeah, yeah. But this it's is ready to glass. Fly. Like, you know, yeah. you don't think of glass as being flexible, but you can right. put this on the ground and stand on it. And then when you get off of it, it turns back to this kind of a hood shape. Oh, okay. So it wants to be in this. It was formed in that space. shape, so it wants to be in this shape, yeah. And it's super scratch resistant and yeah. lightweight, obviously. Does this have the connectors on it? Or it does. Just... Yeah, you can't see them because yeah. they're blacked out. So. Oh, okay. So you can kind of see a faint little mark yeah, where the barely. tape is. So we can, huh. we can show you in the back where the tape is. Okay. You can, so it's kind you, of... can, you can film the drop test and the, the ball stuff. Oh, okay. Where, what can we drop it on? <laughs> drop it on what? Just, stuff. I, don't, try? I don't know what... Uh, Should we try? I don't know it could be a cyber track moment. We've already been tested. We'll have a Franz moment. We, we might have a Franz moment. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, right. Oh. Sheesh. It's okay. Dang. Didn't crack. It's okay. pretty amazing. So we can throw oh, wow. it out. That's impressive how durable it is. Yeah. It. Those things have gone through that. They go through the 90 mile an hour hail strike test and they wow. go through the one meter ball drop test. And then that's good. Yeah, this is the color I like. I guess so you have the, the frame of reference for the mm -hmm. design improvements we've made. This is smaller nice stuff, but it's still nice. Yeah, yeah, it's smaller. <laughs> no, I prefer the yoke, definitely. Well, yeah, this look familiar. <laughs> yeah, it was hard to look at the the right tiny screen, right? Because it, it used to be way over there. Oh, so. yeah, no, that makes sense. I like what you did with me. Love that. Well, you've already seen the rendering, so this is this is what's in those renderings. Yeah, all this foam is like exact to the renderings. Oh wow! When you sit there, your H point, your the way your feet feel. Can I sit in it? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you'll be able to adjust the yoke. That's just a representative yoke. We're gonna have a 3D printed one soon. So that's the size of the rear of the side wow. vision screens, and then this uh -huh. is your main display with your what we call a rotary vent system. Oh, the um, AC is coming out there. One. Does that indirectly cool the display at all, or is it so no, efficient? No, you want actually you want to separate the two so there's a thermal oh. barrier between the two interesting and then we have a separate cooling system just for the what's called the dcu the board the d display control unit the hvac flows around it in its own kind of inner and outer funnel and then we 
have the ability to have on off left right up down in an analog way oh interesting how are you adjusting this so you'll be able to use your finger and shut it on or shut it off and then change the direction of the airflow you'll physically touch oh there will be a little events there will be little blades or yes. something there oh okay gotcha that's cool a lot of people prefer that they having to pull up the display every time to adjust the I mean, it's more efficient. Like, there's less moving parts and mm. less plastic. And one of the one of the driving factors is you know, minimize the use of plastics mm. or use them in a much more responsible way. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. But with the let's call it analog or mechanical, you'll be able to quickly, you know, turn turn the air off. The air right. will still be blowing, but it won't be blowing directly on you. Gotcha. So you'll be able to shut the vent. Same okay. for the side vents. You'll have on, off, left, right, up, down. Where are those? Are they here? Right there. Oh, this, okay. this is a, re this is a typical oh, yeah, representation. Yeah. And then there's two on the floor. There's one in the one in the cool. center, and then the the side defrost. Oh wow! Yeah. See, I was wondering about that. Does it actually get down into the feet? But you'll choose yeah. on the screen whether you want air in the middle, air down below, uh -huh. or air up uh, for the cowl. I see. And you can mix all three of those. Interesting. But the individual adjustment of the vent, you'll be able to do... That'll be analog. Mechanically. Wow. That's a good choice, I think. I think a lot of people are going to like that. Yeah, I know we've definitely had that, where one of us wants it really cool, and she'll turn off one vent and redirect one vent the other way, right. not having to pull up the screen to cover up your nav or whatever every time. I think that'll be very appreciated. Will this go back and forth as well as up and down? Or? I don't know how expensive it is. I would leave that out personally, just because there's so much adjustment of the seat anyway so if you need this closer you could move the seat up and right that's the cool thing with the seat too if you move it up it gets higher right that's oh that's interesting so if you're short your legs are shorter so when you yeah put the seat it's up. fairly standard to have a non-telescoping on a on a certain on a certain class of vehicles auto cycle kind of thing yeah it's fairly standard yeah <laughs> and let me answer it this way we were able to source a steering column off the shelf mm -hmm. that allows us to go into production with the functionality of, of up and down adjustability. Gotcha. Same thing for other things. We can then begin process with the supplier uh -huh. to develop our own, which go, which telescopes and goes up and down. I see. And even is more light, let's say lightweight or more efficient. Sure, sure. But this okay. this choice allows us to go right to production. I think that's the right call. This is the upper rear view screen. Oh, wow. This is what's above your head right there. I like how wide it is. And it's a separate camera from the backup. Yes. Correct. That, that'll show up on the side. So this, like it this does is on, lower. More like third, a driving. The first camera is below the license plate. Oh, okay. So it gives you a wider field. Yeah. And then it'll overlay on the center screen and give you the steering directions. I see. The rear vision is the one located at the top of the hatch. It gives you a little bit of awareness of where the corner of the vehicle is, the yeah. rear. Yeah. And then it gives you all the rear vision. Did you experiment at all with just having one yes. rear facing camera and it just didn't replicate that experience, you really right? You want a, a, for reversing, which is not something you do very often, sure. but you do it enough that you want that vision. Yeah. You really want a wider field, but that's you don't fair. want a wider field for because you, that's not how our eyes are built. Uh -huh. So when you're just looking for the rear vision, you want a more normal wide field, yeah. but also what you would normally see if you were using a mirror instead of a... a and right. Those backup vision systems have already been in the market for so long. Yeah, yeah. The hardware and software for it actually come with the camera. Oh, really? So right. the camera oh, for the backup fun. kind of already has all that stuff in it. So uh -huh. we just switch, when we go into reverse, we just switch the camera view and then it shows you the reverse lines and all that I stuff. I see. So that saves time. Instead of developing our own, you know, which we had to do for the actual vision system, we just kind of bought that off the shelf. Cool. We just have to display it to the camera. Oh, smart. This is glass SMC. Glass SMC. So it's, oh. uh, it's glass sheet molding compound. Wow. So the other parts are carbon fiber, but uh -huh. we've, had, we've had this for, gosh, almost a year, testing these different wraps. So oh, okay. There's, uh, there's other parts outside uh -huh. and testing these wraps but we were kind of testing to see how do we have to treat the part before you put the wrap on do mm. you have to clean it with alcohol or water oh, or anything oh i see and yeah. basically what marcella found through testing is you don't have to do anything you just put the sticker on really wipe it clean you good yeah, pretty much <laughs> it's the thing the easiest stuff you can see here also this is like a combination of the also the carbon parts oh, wow I together and the way you know everything aligns and how mm -hmm. they handle all this bracket stuff and very interesting. This, wow. is so this is what the trunk will look like. Yeah, yeah. So when you Keeps open it up, that you'll see this carbon, carbon stuff. I love that it just comes out that We're way. We're going to leave as much it as looks <laughs> yes. so is this possible. There is some UV factor that we have to consider. Oh, I see. It has a natural appeal. Now, the, the part that we have to really balance is 
how much do you leave exposed? How much material do you add for NVH? Mm. Because it would be very loud inside. So you want enough carpet, enough soft I see. To, to bring down the noise. Gotcha. But there's places like, for example, the inner side, inside of the hatch. Because it's made of one single piece, we're gonna leave that exposed. Right. Well, and also you can see the finish that it gives. You get class A finish. It's oh, yeah. fantastic. From the mold. From the mold. Man. There's literally no nothing. Sanding, no, no prepping, no priming, no It just comes out like yeah. that. Wow. And you can put fasteners in, so these don't have the embedded fasteners, but like the door hinges and stuff, uh -huh. they're embedded metal fasteners into the part. Uh -huh. So it looks almost like an injection molded part. Yeah, it yeah. It looks like, you know, something plastic that you would wow. see in a piece of electronic or something, except it's tell. big it's... enough for our body structure. Mm -hmm. That I feels know. really rigid. So I think they... we've seen those molds, how they work and how they press this material and it goes yeah. all in the areas is quite unique. Simple. And there's not a lot of waste compared to good, the standard good. metal. Or, yeah, you oh, can recycle yeah. all that, but there's not this big trim piece. Right, There's right. only a little bit of flashings that they set a CNC machine, it trims it, and you're done. And what's it look like as it goes in? Is it kind of like Play-Doh? looks thing? like a candy yeah. bar, yeah. Yeah, kind of oh, wow. Play-Doh-ish. Not Play-Doh, it's more like a big rectangle. Of like a poxy putty, if you okay. ever use a yeah, poxy yeah. putty. And uh -huh. you can see they're actually about half an inch thick. Yeah. Wow. Different bricks in different locations, so they're uh -huh. very precise. They can actually... Yeah. They know the flow and yeah. where to place it, and then the, then the press comes down, and then it goes up. Wow. And there's your part. So usually yeah. you'd have like an injection mold. You'd close the mold. There'd be a cavity, uh -huh. and you'd inject plastic into the cavity. Mm -hmm. This, you put the material in first, and then you ah. squish the material out in the cavity. That's incredible. Yeah. So are the big door kind of side pieces similar to this material, and then the internals of more. Yeah. So the so material. the roll hoop, the cowl, uh -huh. the spider roof structure, and the tub are this carbon fiber SMC. Mm. And the exterior panels are more aesthetic; they don't carry as much load, so mm -hmm. they're made out of this glass fiber wow. SMC. Uh, the glass is a little thicker, you know, and the carbon can be a little thinner. It kind of reminds me of just the way I think of it is it's like same material as carbon fiber; it's just not woven. They're both loose fibers uh -huh. in the goo, and so that. That's, that's so it can flow through the parts. Right. So you can um, these are just glass fibers, where these are I carbon see. fibers. Okay. So the glass fibers, they're just weaker than the carbon fibers. The carbon fibers gotcha. just have more tensile strength. So it's um, still considered a carbon fiber. It's a carbon body. fiber vehicle, yeah. I mean, yeah. All, the structural it's, part it's is carbon. Yeah, it yes. doesn't have that gradient pattern. That would be crazy expensive, I assume, if you wanted to do a woven pattern each time. But this allows you to... It's a completely different process. It's a different process. Yeah. It's, it's usually thermal. Um, set. Also, you have to autoclave it, you have to bake it. Gotcha. Right? It's a very high quality, but not as high volume. Right. And very high cost. You're going for volume. And you have huge limitations. You uh -huh. can't do this stuff with you can't make fabrics. Ribs. This oh, is perfect really? because it's all new stuff. Yeah. You try to do this with a piece of fabric, basically, you, you just can't. can't. Do it. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't you work. have to do you, so you, you have the limit. Mold. Uh, you have the limitation of what you can do and how you can do it. I so see. that's huge. That's perfect for body part, but when it goes to these structural things, it's not, not gonna work. It. This is the way. That's fascinating. Yeah, you, you can get little ribs. Uh huh. It's you very get, you know, internal features uh -huh. to actually screw stuff into. Whereas yeah. if it was a structured fiber, you would have to come back and bond something onto that later. Gotcha. And it yeah. would be terrible. And you know, complex. the fibers, that's what you see in panels usually mm. because work perfect when you want to yeah. see it flat, when you yeah, want to see yeah. it and, and that, but not uh -huh. for complicated parts. Gotcha. They got it with the SMC. I love the skateboard. Yeah, hey, we talked about doing some special edition of Terra skateboards. The, 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 these uh, are actually made pedals. out of oh, fiberglass nice. uh, with this, the first prototypes vehicles that we made that you see there. Oh, wow. This is actually made out of fabric, fiberglass. So you can see also, oh, it's easy cool. to make a skateboard because it's fairly simple. Yeah, shape. yeah. I actually use a uncut skateboard as my mold. Oh, so wow. laid in there, and that's how I make Very it. Very creative. But it's probably way too early to ask, but has there been much discussion about higher voltages? Yeah, the problem is none of the higher voltage stuff is commoditized. Oh. So the 12 volt stuff is commoditized, yeah. some 24 volt stuff in industrial equipment and mm -hmm. uh, trucks, but we need lightweight, so that doesn't really help us. We would love to have a team that could develop a 48 volt platform for yeah. us. You know, we don't have Tesla type money. Sure, they're you messing know, around with it. We, but we have to buy what's commoditized and what's commoditized is 12 volts still. And what about the, the higher voltage for the big battery? Oh, you like mean 800 a, volts versus, so, yeah. so 48 volts would help 
us in lightening the harness. So the cool thing right. about what uh, what Eric and Charlie are working on is uh -huh. we have this I distributed I.O. system. So okay. these, these little I.O. boards are what yeah. controls everything around the vehicle. Okay. And we're able to take the wiring harness weight down by half because we use I.O. boards instead of connectors oh. and wires to go everywhere. So, good, so most good. people would put the electronics on the dash and then yeah. run a wire all the way to the rear. And if you do that for every component, your wiring harness gets to be pretty heavy. Yeah. So if you just have to run a can wire and plus and minus for power to a control board, mm -hmm. and the control board just has little wires that come out, oh, and you save okay. a lot of wiring harness weights. If you go to 48 volts, yeah. then the run of that power wire gets even lighter. So you can Good. then cut the, you can cut the weight again by half. We feel we're already most of the way there with our IO system. So okay. the payoff to go to 48 volts isn't as great. I but the 800 you. volt battery, it's another thing where it's just not commoditized yet. I got you. And you not know, off 400 the shelf. volts is standard. Uh -huh. And you know, 800 volt makes a lot of sense because the big current carrying cables can get smaller. Again, you know, it's just getting commoditized components that can go to 800 volts. It's difficult. And does it matter more on larger vehicles because there's like more wiring versus you guys don't have <laughs> it a would. huge. Yeah, huge length to, to go. If you're doing so. a semi truck, then you know 800 volts is going to save you a ton of weight. Our solar charge controller, which we can show you, actually uh, does up to 800 volts. Oh, interesting. Is weird. We've already okay. designed it in in some areas. We're looking to um, monetize our solar to other industries, and we're, mm. we're talking with a bunch and have some some commitment letters, and we're going to start doing some trials soon. Oh wow, um, that'd be exciting. It's, it's really on the basis of the solar charge controller that can uh -huh. be used on anything from a 48 volt battery all the way up to an 800 volt battery. Wow. And it takes the solar power from a 30 to 60 volt panel. Uh -huh. it can take a bunch of those panels, maximum power point all those panels to get the most power out of it, and then send it to a a battery and a, a tug for equipment at the airport good, or good. a cooler for a truck. Uh -huh. or, you know, there's, just, there's, there's a ton of applications. Plus, you're probably more compatible with superchargers at the lower voltage because I know a lot of them are not ready yet for the... Yeah, the you basically voltage. have to break the pack in half. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then you break an 800-volt right. pack and two 400-volt packs right. and that's how you charge them. That's what Lucy should have done. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. So if you want to position yourself where the huh. vehicle is, you guys can see it on the yeah. screen here. Oh, wow. So you can see the new center console, right? Like it's totally yeah, yeah. Totally so I got the phone charger here. You said this component's modular? Yeah, the whole the whole center console is modular. Wow. Yeah, yeah I need some big, fat oh, cup holders. Yeah. <laughs> some of those new water bottles. Yeah, oh, we, have, wow. we have three different as well. Um, I can see so much of the UI there. That's beautiful. And you can see the side mirror displays in front of the yoke. So that should be oh, yeah, yeah. representing what you'd actually see coming from the cameras. Uh-huh. And then oh, same with perfect. the rear vision display. I love that position. I love that car plane image. <laughs> that's really good. Oh, I can see the little vents here now. Yes. That's clever. Twist them and move them from right here. And even on the left and right, right below the speakers, you can see some as well. Same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. This is a little dial here. <coughs> yeah. Wow. And yeah. then this is a uh, horn and volume, right? Right. Death Valley up there. <laughs> yeah, you're on the salt flats. Right? Oh, okay. And then this is the manual door release down here? Yeah, correct. There are little holes in this up here? It's mesh. Oh, mesh. Gotcha. Mesh battery. Like oh, this display piece is connected with this top board here, right? Correct. It would be all one assembly. Uh -huh. So it'll have the overhead unit with it. With the uh, lights, uh -huh. of lamps, they will have the hazard switch, and then the, the rear vision screen. Monitor. Does that open uh, pilot thing go up there somewhere? Eventually, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's, there's space yeah. up there for that. Yeah. So is it mainly just two big trusses going through the wheel pan? Yeah, upper or? and lower control. Okay. But you can see the new wheel pan um, with the. Oh, this fin. For the fin. Yeah, that's it's all right. Which part illuminates when you signal? Oh, the front part. Is yellow? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then the rest, the rest is reflex. Reflex. I remember you talking about that with Steve, about the, you didn't want it bouncing the right. light. Is this where the vent would go? Yes. Yes, the window for the vent. You can see the, the interconnects, too. Right? That's what they look like visible between the solar cells. Is this wiper a little bit more up than gamma? It is than gamma. Uh -huh. uh, that may not be like its final production position. I see. But it is. It is the, the blade and the, and the arm. Does it rest in the same place as long as you're not using it, or does it have kind of like a open when it's wiping position? Because I know the Model Three, like it'll sit lower when it's not raining, and then when it starts raining, it kind of lifts up. It's more of a ladder. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and then Absolutely. if you want to go to the wheel skirt, you can see the little opening access for the wheel. Oh yeah, where's that? Oh. For the rear wheel. The porthole? Yes, the porthole. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, if you want, you can adjust your positioning. I can show you how to do that so you can see it better. It's like you're replacing your tire right now. You're yeah. your air on the rear. This is what I do. Well, thanks, you guys, both of you, for uh, showing me so much around the place. It was a pleasure. Sure, a pleasure. And uh, looking oh, forward to those PI builds. Yeah, should be wonderful. Thank you all for watching and supporting, and uh, keep the questions coming, because they're willing to answer anything you can think of. So, take care, all. Bye-bye.